and the Hebrew, early Hebrew manuscripts, but they later were separated into the first and second Ezra, and ultimately into Ezra and Nehemiah as we have them now. The immediate concern of both these books, Ezra and Nehemiah, is the account of the return of the Jews to Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple and the walls around the city. Preceding that, of course, was the destruction of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar and the captivity of the Jews in Babylon, uh, which we referred to a couple of weeks ago on, on Easter morning as we looked at that text in Ezekiel. After uh, the time had passed, according to God's decree, the people returned to rebuild the temple. The first return happened under Sheshbazar. Then under the direction of Zerubbabel, work was begun to rebuild the temple. The second return took place under Ezra's leadership. By the time Nehemiah finally went to Jerusalem, Jews had been living in Jerusalem for over 80 years. And so in the book of Nehemiah, we have the account of the rebuilding of the wall around Jerusalem. And uh, there's a wonderful transition in this book from beginning to the end. And, uh, as Rich read for us, in the beginning we have a report of the city in distress and reproach. And by the time we get to the end of the book, not only will the walls be rebuilt, but there will be spiritual renewal and, uh, and many changes made uh, that will allow the people to worship God in a meaningful, tangible way. And so what we see here is Nehemiah's uh, usefulness to God in doing these things. And, and Nehemiah serves a wonderful role. And uh, we see this right at the beginning of the book. And we're just going to look at a couple of matters. We have that little green sheet out of your bulletin. and there's an outline to follow. And we want to look at Nehemiah here in his first couple of verses and how he was used by God uh, in, a, in a mighty way. And the first element we see here in Nehemiah was that he was prepared. And if you want to be used by God uh, in a meaningful way, you need to be prepared. Notice those couple of words there. And he might have just not even paid any attention as Rich was reading. It says, now it happened. We might simply pass over those words, but nothing really just happens by accident. The passage goes on to explain what happened, of course. Nehemiah heard the report from his brother, some of the other men, concerning what had happened in Judah. There's a lot of now it happened in our lives. There is a bumper sticker, bleep happens. But things don't just happen. God is sovereign, and the things that happen in our lives happen for a reason. The question in our lives is not so much what happens, but how do we respond to what happens. As someone has said, uh, life is 10% our circumstances and 90% how we respond to them. There's a book in Nehemiah because Nehemiah was prepared to respond to what had happened. To be sure, God has sovereignly put him in a strategic position. Uh, no doubt he was... Uh, one of, uh, of one of the leading families in Jerusalem. We get that by his connection with his brother and other things. Uh, there is all of that to be sure. But nonetheless, he was prepared in such a way that God could use him. Ephesians 5.15, speaking to the believers, Paul said, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. God's sovereign hand got the... God puts before all of us opportunities whereby we can serve him. Mm -hmm.